Hey guys, Cyber Dragon here. So, sadly, I don't think I can do long ish videos as often now. Uh, that's that not because of scheduling of sorts, but it's because of my phone. It loses charge really fast now for some weird reason. So, I hope you guys can understand that. I may not, but I'm planning on switching to a different phone so it can at least hold its charge faster sooner or later and if i can get a good microphone for my laptop then yeah so let's begin last time we left off uh, melissa was entered to the portal of kurigiri with deku and toga melissa is wondering where they are at she's looking around and seeing well all for one as she asks, who are you? All for one state that I am all for one. The so-called villain of the society. Say, a villain? So, what happened to you then? You look so, well, damaged. Noticing all the tubes and such on in him. Think, ah, this. Well, it's all thanks to All Might that I'm like this. So he is the one who nearly killed me. It being Melissa with a shock expression, like, what? Uncle Might try to kill you? But he's a symbol of peace. He shouldn't need to. Yes, well. Look at me now. Nearly dead and beaten. Down to a pulp. Barely alive if it wasn't for these machines keeping me like that. She having more of a major breakdown of what hero society is becoming to, when All Might of all people has to kill Sir, so, the man she looked up to as a symbol, not, so not to have to resort to that. But that was all in the past now. We are looking to build a better future. One where heroes nowadays are different where we so called villains will rule the society to for the better of it. She doesn't like the ruling part, but she does want to try to better society. And the hero society as it is now is clearly not great if people are worried about fame and glory and not trying to help people. All the time. So, she said, Alright, but I would like to some conditions. But, hmm, conditions, you say? What kind? For one, I don't want to kill people unless I absolutely have to for self defense. I don't want to kill innocents or heroes. Villains, if I have to, as said. All right, that's arrangeable. Anything else in Pacific? So, I kind of also want my little own laboratory to work on support items for me and the others here. Hmm, that is very doable. Man, what is your? Is there any other conditions? That. Yes, I would like to be on a team separate from the rest. What do you mean by that, young Miss Shield? So, well, I really want to mainly team up with Izuku and Toga as a separate team. We'll still follow with the others, but as of, like, we are uh, a separate unit of that team. A team within a team, if you will. That is very doable. But, note this, I also have my own conditions, 
and I hope you will follow them if I agree to yours. Depending on what they are, I will. First, you will follow my and Shikaraki's lead on missions. As long as I don't have to kill them, fine. And, as for your team leader of your group, it will not be you since if you are a new member. So you will have your Deku will be part of, uh, Carnage will be part of your team. Uh leader. So, uh, Alright. So, and thirdly, you will be training under him So for the time being. Learning your new quirk. Once you receive it. Uh, uh, my quirk? But I'm quirkless. Uh, ah, that is where you will be wrong. I can give you a quirk. Just as Deku told you. Or uh, Izuku has told you. If I say Deku, I mean Izuku. It's just more convenient or carnage in that case. Whatever one you guys prefer. So I can really get a quirk. Uh, indeed. So, but wait, if... You can give quirks to the quirkless. Why don't you? And stop being a villain. Oh dear. It's not that simple. People overreact when they hear this type of stuff. Either fear you or from the amount of power you have. Try to kill you even. Or silence you permanently. Even removing your name off the history books. But. As am I am a villain, I can hide in the shadows and gather strength and power and give them to others once I rule. Or once we rule, might I say. Realizing that that might be the case, she accepts. So, how does this work? It's simple. You should kneel down before me and I'll place my hand on top of your head, giving you a quirk. I have one specifically in mind for you to give. Alright. Will it be painful? I will try to make it as painless as possible, but I can make no guarantees it won't be painful. Alright, but may I know what the quirk is before accepting it? Hmm, fair enough. It is an ice-based quirk. It is called ice manipulation. You can manipulate the ice itself, even freezing the moisture that's in the air into ice weapons of sorts, like an ice pick or freezing your opponent in place. Sidebar here. She won't be able to do stuff that Todoroki can do, but... Yeah, she's also kind of like an ice bender of a sort. Like from Avatar. But... Different. She doesn't control the water itself. She can only freeze it. So she's a cryomancer of a sort. I guess. And... Yeah, so... that Also, the rest will be explained as an awful one. So, sidebar ended. So, but there is some side effects of this quirk that will take effect after I give it to you. Uh, uh, like what? Uh, well, for one, your skin will more be more of a pale, and your hair will change color to blonde to white. A silver white. So, and your body temperature itself will be more lower than most. So, she realizes this will change her permanently of sorts. But she's accept you're not willing to accept it. Deku and Toga smile in the background, realizing that she will be part of the team now. And she kneels and all four and places his hand on her top of her head, giving her the quirk as she is screaming in agony. Fainting from the pain after receiving the quirk. 
I did say I would try to make it as painless as possible, but I made no promises. So, Carnage. Yes, all for one. Bring Miss Shield to uh, qu uh, private quarters. I'll have her lab set up here soon. And But for now, as we are waiting for the attack for the force training camp, you will train Miss Shield as much as you can. Because I think the tra like the training camp will hap I will say happen in two weeks. Well, actually, three or four weeks. About a month, I would say. I'm not sure. But yeah, so they do that. Bring her to uh, her bed and let her rest. It is now the next morning. Melissa feels a little colder than usual. She thinks, so, my cork is starting to affect me now. Go to a mirror and notice her skin is becoming a little more paler and her tips of her hair is starting to be uh, white and silver-ish. So, it's not going to fully do it quite yet, but it's a slow-going process. Yeah. Hmm. As she exhaled, little frost particles came along, out. Wow, that's cool. So, <laughs> literally. I wonder where's everyone else at the moment. As she went out, seeing Toga and Deku waiting on her. Ah, so the newbie's awake. I see the quirk is starting to take effect on you now. Toga walks up to her and is like, Welcome to the team. My name is Toga, uh, Himiko Toga. Uh, uh, Melissa Shield. Uh, yeah, I know, but... Oh, wait. No, they already knew each other. Fuck. I forgot she went with us. Like... So, screw that. Like, oh, good morning, newbie. So, are you ready to train today? So, uh, train? Uh, oh yeah, I guess since it was my in new quirk, you might need we might need to see my capabilities of it, huh? So, yep, and all for one is trusted us to train you. So, all right, should I meet everyone else first? Like, in due time. But first, we also need to come up with code name for you. Hold on. Sorry for that. But yeah, so. Anyways. Well, uh, like, a uh, code name? So, yes. Most of us have code names, except for Toga here. So, but I don't mind that. But for you, you might as well have a code name. Uh, okay, do you have any suggestions? Like, hmm, well, since if you're a quirk of all the ice, and since if you're a villain, why not Killer Frost? Uh, uh, alright, I guess that will work. I can't really think of anything else more creative. Atta girl, now, let's go train you. And yeah, she goes and trains with them for the next few weeks. As such, she does meet everyone else in the group with the League of Villains. And during this time, the UA Finals has become, it's uh, coming to an end. I can't really do much for this because I don't really know how this would play out, so sorry. So we're mostly skipping that part over. But the majority of people who failed, failed. And since the majority of the classmates who, you know, either left, died, or had to leave due to injury, cannot be part of Class 1 anymore, such as Mineta or Ida, Kendo, Tetsu Tetsu, and Chinzo are part of it, so their battles will go differently, and so would Froppy. Because Froppy has Survivor Guilt, if you guys remember. 
since the Rashid survived the brutalness of carnage and Mineta did not. So, I would say because of this, Foppy and Tokoyami does fail. Because Foppy does not have her confidence in herself and the guilt that she survived and Mineta did not. And Kirishima actually did train a bit more, so he would think with how to do this better than in canon. But ultimately, Sato does fail. Tetsu Tetsu and Kendo does pass their test. I would say Kendo was going up against Power Loader, while Tetsu Tetsu, uh, I would say, was going up against. Hmm. Present Mike. I don't know why, but. I guess because he's. Because, well, Jiro and some others were not part of him. Of 1A. As he was going up against Snipe. Yeah. And. All Might would be facing Bakugo. And. The only one that makes sense to me would be Todoroki, so... Yeah. And Momo would be teamed up with... I'm not honestly sure who. But the more important characters, I will say, are teamed up with whoever. And Bakugo does pass with Todoroki. Sorry it's not epic enough, but I really want to get to the forest training arc. So yeah. Eventually... They all get the results of the test. The people who failed does fail, but not Kirishima. And some extra people failed, like Tokoyami Froppy. But yeah, so... And during this training, Melissa has actually gotten accustomed to her quirk. Her hair is finally fully wa- silver white, while her skin is pale. And she has good control of it. She can shoot ice, uh, well, spikes at people, and even make ice picks to stab people. She can also freeze someone over, not in a matter of seconds, but it's a slow going process either way. So, she can't do it instantaneously. This isn't an overpowered quirk. It's just simple ice manipulation. But if she goes up against anyone with an ice quirk, they're pretty screwed. So, yeah. But, majority, she is used for stealth missions. But she prefers not to go out on missions. Until the day that Class 1A goes to the training camp. Shikaraki calls everyone to gather up. Which they all do. Deku, Melissa, Toga, Muscular, Mustardias, and Dobby, and everyone else, does come to the bar area. And Shikaraki says, Alright, you all will be going to this little training camp along out here in this forest. The Class 1A will be part of it, and we'll be capturing... Uh, someone in particular. Who is the target? And I will say it's Koski Bakugo. Deku instantly stiffens up like, why are we capturing Kachan? Hmm, it's simple. I know you two have some beef with each other, but if we capture a UA student, not only that, but the top student, it shows that, well, UA is not that high and mighty. And, you get to torture him all you want. So, but if you do find anyone else there, who will be a seamer, could convincingly be switched to our side, do capture them. So, so yeah, that's their mission and goal. Not to turn Bakugo to a villain, but to capture him to make a power play 
and to torture him, to make him unable to be a hero, perhaps. And, if they do find anyone of interest, turn them into villains. But Deku is grinning ear to ear after he hears he get the tortured Bakugo. Even further than he already did emotionally. Like, ooh, I'm liking this. But what do we all do if the students get in the way? Simple. You can all kill them if you want to. I don't care. And you, Killer Frost. Yeah? You're going on this mission. But I don't want to kill any of them. Fine, but you're still going to learn from one of us. So you're going to learn with your teammate, Toga. And Toga looks at Melissa. Yay, besties going together. So, uh, yeah, Toga. Now, is you like Carnage? So, yeah? You're going with Muscular on his side of the area, over here. So, Alright. So putting the two powerful members of the League there? So, of course. So, well, maybe the most deranged. Hey! So, but, yeah. Or so, get going. I'll send a Nomu there too, but Darby's in command. Got it? Yeah. Fine. Hold on. Sorry, I don't know why I keep getting interrupted while recording. Uh. Let's see here. But anyways, so yeah, the training over at, well, the Forza, like, the training camp, is more brutal than in canon. Not only 1A was pushed off the side, but 1B. So they all could get the same training experience. Because they want to toughen them all up. Not just as I said 1A, but 1B. And they realize the system with 1A and 1B, not really the greatest. But 1A will still get more attention and sorts, while 1B will get slightly a bit more than they usually would. But still not as much. So they will still get regular training by All Might and some others. But yeah, so... Anywho, during this time as well, Deku is now just scouting them out, using his invisibility. Looking to see what kind of training they're doing. See, ooh, they're training them hard. Glad I'm not part of the hero course. <laughs> yeah. And he sees a little kid, like, so it's being by himself. Huh, little antisocial, isn't he? Then he sees him punching, I'll say Bakugo in the nuts. Yeah, Bakugo being the guy he's gonna be punching. As Teku is trying to hold back his laughter tremendously after seeing that. Like, Bakugo got punched in the nuts. But yeah. I already like this kid. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Baku doesn't really talk to Koda. And, during this time, they all do their training. Now, starting to. Umarok and Baku has grown even closer. I think I made them dating now, if I'm not wrong. But if not, they started doing that the time when Deku and... Melissa was being, while well, Deku was training Melissa. So, yeah. Which Deku does follow Koda, because he's curious about the kid. He sees him just looking uh, off to the side of the cliff. 
And Dick gives him a bit of flashbacks about his time when he was so quirkless. Which makes Deku think for a moment. Like, my life really did change after that day, huh? I became what I am now. So. so I hope this. He's. Kind of starting to realize. Like, how he got to do this point. Him becoming a villain. Him. Just in general. Like how all my crushes dream how Bakugo even did. And then he got this amazing power which he using it to make Carnage. He was influenced by the Carnage symbiote, but he still have a little bit of Deku in him. He wants to say something inspirational to him, but he know he can't do it as a symbiote, so he changes his appearance and Walks over to, uh, well, uh, Coda. Hey, kid. Coda turns around and seeing it's, well, Deku, but definitely. Uh, who are you? What are you doing here? This is private land. I'm like, oh, uh, is it? I'm sorry, I was hiking and kind of just got lost in the forest. Like, yeah, whatever. What do you want? I should be asking you that like, kid. Like, what are you doing up here? Should you be with your parents? Like, Coda looks down. Like, I don't have any parents. So they died from a villain. Deck, you're hearing that. Like, poor kid. He's not as deranged right now, but a little bit of Deku is seeping out for this kid. Since so he's starting him to look on the side of the cliff, he doesn't want him to commit suicide, so... Yeah. Like, how he tried to. So, oh, kid. I'm sorry to hear that. How did, like, they die? They... So why should I tell you? You're such a stranger. True, but... Hey. You won't have to worry about me talking about this to anyone else, so... Kurt thinks about that for a moment. My parents died from a villain. So, a villain? What was this villain's name? I don't know. All I know is that my parents died from him, and they would still be alive if it wasn't for this damn hero society. How people were just running around killing each other. Deku thinks of the past, well, year, that he's been doing that specifically. Just killing willy-nilly. And starting to regret it a little. The carnage symbiote still influenced him to do this, but... Yeah. So, well, kid. I don't see it that way. What? What do you mean? So, well... I don't see people killing each other will and all of a sudden for no reason. Sure, there's some psychopaths out there, but if there was no heroes, who would stop the villains? If you think everyone would just be all happy without heroes? No. If there was no laws to put in place for that, more people would die than usual. So sorry, kid, but... Even if they weren't heroes, they probably would have died sometime sooner or later. Coda is thinking about that for a moment. But he's right. Even if they weren't heroes, he, his, uh, their people would die more and more. Coda, shut up. You don't know anything. Kid, I know more than you think. Trust me, I've seen the darkest side of humanity and in myself. Looking at his own hands, the same hands he killed civilians with. And Code is confused by that statement. Like, what do you mean? So, 
I can't tell you, kid. I do give you condolences, though. So, I know this one kid, though, who didn't have a quirk. He did the same speech from what he did, too. So, kid, okay, it's not as bad as he's saying, but so. There will be a hero in your life sometime sooner or later. I hope you know that. Later, kid. Wait, who are you? He hesitated to say his own name. Like, Sorry, kid, but maybe sometime if I tell you or see you again, I'll tell you. But for now, you'll know that there was someone who will be your hero. Unlike for me. So bye. He walks off, leaving Coda to think. Oh yeah. It is now a couple days later. Carnage, the symbiote, has finally kind of made Deku's urge to kill again come back. His insanity. But he still has a lingering bit of him. It grew even more after that, so the current symbiote can't influence him as easily. Well, still pretty easily, but... You know what I mean. Kind of like, he still has more of Deku in him now than he usually would. But, so. But, yeah. It's now the start of the villain attack. So. And Deku is on the side of the mountain range. Ooh, blue, blue frames. I better stay away from those. They might actually hurt me quite a bit. As he looks down at where Muscular... Muscular, where did you go? But he looks down and sees Muscular almost trying to kill Coda. No one knows where Coda's at. Only Deck goes in Muscular's there, so he's like, oh hell no. The little bit of Deku that's in him is taking control fully. He grabs Coda with the red tendrils, moving him aside. When as soon as Muscular is swinging his fist down, which Muscular miss. Yeah, I'm not killing Coda in this. I know I'm going to make this a fuck-up story, but I'm making it a tragic story for Deku for him. What the? I didn't even hit the kid? Which, Deku kind of like, no, you didn't. Which, when Coda sees him, like, you're Carnage. Then Deku's face peeled off. Oh, the Carnage symbiote's face peeled off of Deku. Like, it, it, it's you. Like, yeah, kid. Now get out of here. Look. And he sees Coda's crying. Like, why are you crying, kid? I just saved you. Like, he he's the guy who ki killed my parents. So, what? He looks at uh, Muscular. Like, you killed his parents? Like, it was nothing personal. You know this. You killed plenty of people, haven't you, Carnage? But Deku said. Uh, didn't think of like this. He could have easily killed his Coda's parents before too. Or even killed many other people's parents. Like, the parents, children, or anyone like that. He thinks, oh god. But he can't think of that now. Look, you know what? I think I'm going to take you out. You've been kind of pissing me off lately anyway. It's like, what? You're gonna try to take me out, kid? Don't make me laugh. Oh, trust me. We aren't laughing. <laughs> yeah. Which, the carnage symbiote cut him up again, and Muscular and Deku starts fighting. Muscular seems to have the upper hand, and says Coda is worried, like, He's, even though he's a villain, he's trying to save me. Why? Which, the armor muscular does go through Deku's chest. But Deku just stares at muscular and then laughs hysterically. <laughs> you really think that could kill me? And he just plunged his own arm into the muscle fibers of muscular. Which muscular wheels it back. And grabbing his arm, like, 
Oh, you're like, what did you do? Like, oh, you'll see. <laughs> As the hole goes away in his chest. So, that's it. He's always a sadistic side, but now he's a little bit more Deku than he was from beginning. Oh, so, yeah. And doing this, uh, Melissa and Toga is, well, dealing with Umaraka and. I don't know who else, per se, because technically Foppy did fail, I did say, so. Let's say she's with Momo? No. I'm not really sure then. Pick anyone you think, and yeah. I'll say Bakugo, actually, yeah. Momo and Bakugo. No, wait, fuck. I thought of what it was earlier, but now I can't think. Uh, Umaraka and Kirishima. Couldn't say that the failed and Kirishima didn't. Which, Toga's having a tough time dealing with Kirishima because of its hardening quirk, but Melissa's coming in and freezing him up, too. In her villain costume, think of Killer Frost from DC, really. Just an outfit like that, like a blue hoodie with the. Uh, I'm not really sure, honestly, so. A blue hoodie with just like blue sweatpants or whatever. Just think of an outfit, I'm not really sure, I don't think of that head. With her. Silver hair poking out of it. The hood too. And yeah, and Mr. Press did capture Bakugo eventually. But well capture Bakugo eventually. But since if I didn't have to deal with Tokoyami and Moonfish is there. So they can't really keep the they have to keep the guards up against Moonfish, but they don't even know where you know, uh, Mr. Compress is at yet. So, Mr. Compress is gonna wait until either Moonfish takes out Todoroki or if they take out Moonfish because they will exhaust so much energy doing that. And yeah, I know Bakugo has one fall, so yeah. But anyways, back with Muscular and Deku's fight. With Muscular is now reeling up for another attack. He's trying to, he reels his fist back like, you little punk! Which, he will, he throws the punch, but Deku catches it. And Muscular finally realizes, like, there's no muscle fire. It's like, what the hell? What did you do? Like, easy. I cancel out your quirk with my symbiote. Now then, let's have some real fun. Whereas he just pulls out all of his guns. Well... If you guys remember, I gave him a bit of a gun quirk from the villains from the USJ. So he summons his guns from his tendrils and his fingers as he's shooting muscular with symbiote bullets. Which, yeah, afterwards even paralyzing him. Which muscular falls to the ground full of bullet holes and bleeding badly. Like, what are you going to do now, you monster? Funny, I thought you were the monster. <laughs> yeah. But I might as well end you here and now. As he makes the symbiote sword, cutting off Muscular's head, and even eating his head. Afterwards, he's starting to eat the rest of Muscular's body to hide the evidence he was really ever here. Then he turned back to Coda, with Coda with a terrified look. Don't worry, kid. I'm not gonna kill you. Like, uh, y you're not? But why? Why did you even do this? Like, I told you. Someone will help you one day. I don't think it will be me after what I just made you go through to watch. But go back to everyone else. I got my job to do. Uh, thank you. Don't thank me, kid. Really.
with Kota as she runs up to Izuku and hugging him for a moment. Deku did not suspect this, but he has this warm feeling. So, and afterwards, Kota ran off. Deku sits standing there, thinking, why did he do that? Why did he hug a monster like me? But after a little bit, Kota does reach Aizawa. Which Aizawa does return him to the other students who's there. And Deku, well, Karnish has finally regained control of Deku in a sort by making him do. Him, influence him. But even Carnage is confused himself whether this is the right thing to do or not. But yeah. They eventually even do catch Bakugo. They all head back escaping. But Deku is changing inside. Emotionally and out aiming carnage. But no one has noticed quite yet. Toga has, but that's because that's because they're dating. And the healers find out that Bakugo was kidnapped. And Kendo and, well, Tetsu Tetsu did deal with uh, Mustard, yes. And Bakugo and Todoroki did deal with Moonfish, even though it did take a lot of out of them. That's when Compress, Mr. Compress took him. But yeah, that's where I'm going to end it for now, guys. Uh, I know this part was kind of all over the place, but I didn't really have a solid idea of how to do this. Uh, hopefully I will think of a better idea next time. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, my phone has decent charge, but right now it's not like the best charge for my phone. Like it drains really fast now, but this is a really, really old phone. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, uh... Yeah, this will kind of replace Anti-Venom for a little while. And after this one, Anti-Venom will come back. And whenever I finish up Exodia, and or whatever Deku met Toga early, then sa the Soundwave one will take that place. But yeah, have a good day. Stop dragging out.